uh, helped to form me in my sense of social justice. The stories you were told. Yes. Yeah. The stories that my mother would tell. You know, my my grandparents wouldn't talk about it. Sometimes my paternal grandmother would start to tell a story, and my grandfather would uh, say in French, "Ça suffit. That's enough. No more." Let's talk about KPFA, and 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 you've been through some battles at KPFA. Um, it, it, KPFA hasn't always been an easy place to work at. No, it hasn't. And if, uh, like I said, if it hadn't been for the fact that I loved my colleagues and I loved my work, th- you know, the the swirling politics would uh, would have driven me away at some point. So, yes, there was 1999 when the Pacifica executive director decided that our general manager at the time, Nicole Sawaya, who was challenging um, challenging the director and challenging the board was, quote, not a good fit and um, fired her summarily, which led to a huge uproar and protest by both the staff and the community of listeners which eventually ended up one night in uh, Pacifica sending in the Berkeley police to um, tell us all to leave, the staff to leave. And those of us who were here, all of a sudden, and you know, some, some of you, some of our listeners may know Van Jones from his uh, appearance on CNN. Well, he was a local organizer. So he appears in the building that night as we're like refusing to go or trying to figure out what to do. And the Berkeley police are saying, you know, you've got to leave, you've got to go. Although they didn't really want to be put in that position. And Van Jones tells us, no, don't go willingly. You got to get arrested. And so we're like, oh, (laughs) okay. I didn't didn't wake up thinking about that. (laughs) So, um, Anyway, so we were locked out, so we were arrested, and 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 I still, when I have to fill out paperwork, that arrest is still, it's still on my FBI, <laughs> California Department of Justice background check. Um, not conviction, but that arrest is still there. Um, three weeks, and we finally there's a a, a march of ten thousand people in the streets. Dolores Huerta is there. We finally get back into the into the building. But we got back in and with a new, eventually a new set of uh, bylaws, which have led to, um, you know, some very uh, major dysfunction in how Pacifica operates today, sadly. The democratizing part of it. You know, and I don't even know if democratizing is, I mean, that was the intent, but I don't think that that's unfortunately how it's worked out. And, and I know we could debate this till the cows come home, um, and, and some people would. But I, I just think that ultimately the, the, the system of governance that we now have is not working. That might be the one thing we all do agree about, actually. <laughs> Maybe. I, I'm not sure about that. Do you have a hope for, for KPFA in the future? Do you have thoughts about KPFA in the future? Well, certainly in terms of the this governance question, I have sadly come to the conclusion that for KPFA to survive, that we need to become independent, uh, perhaps affiliated in some way and sharing programming, but um, in terms of our governance and our finances independent of the rest of Pacifica or we um, may not survive. That's that's the conclusion that I, I have come to and actually came to several years ago. Do you think it's possible for KPFA yes, to become independent from Pacifica? I do. How so? Well, I know that, um, and I don't think it's a secret because there was an email that I saw sent out. I know that some people are working to um, to try to put that kind of plan into effect. I'm not involved in that. I just know that some people are working on it and I, you know, give them my wholehearted support. Eileen Alfandera, you said you will continue to be reporting. Are there special things you want to cover? 
I first just want to hone my my very, very rusty reporting and uh, software editing skills. And then I am planning to go to Spain in uh, at the end of the summer for a few months. And I'm interested in looking at the question of how Spain is confronting its fascist past. There's a, a, a law of... Um, memoria um, a law of memory and i i haven't dug into it yet but i know that they are trying to confront what happened under the franco dictatorship where so many people were uh, killed abused imprisoned and how they're now trying to deal with it and so i'm i think that's you know those kind of reckonings um are fascinating and important and so i'd like to do some reporting on that when i'm there and as far as here, I don't have any specific uh, plans, but I'm, I'm sure once my uh, will, we, once will I'm we get no to longer, assign you? Will we get to assign you on things? Will we get to call you, you up and tell you to try. go? You, you can, you can. It'll be the other. It'll be the other end. Um, you know, you can say, "Hey, Eileen, <laughs> can you go cover this?" Eileen, I'll, I'll, I'll welcome those calls. Eileen Offenberry, congratulations again on on a stellar career. Um, and we look forward to those new new stories coming in and, and what, what holds for you you next. And we're, we're glad you'll still be associated with the radio station because you mean a great deal to, to so many of us. Thank you for taking this time to talk to me today. Yeah, and, and KPFA means a, a great deal to me. And I, and I also, it would be remiss if I didn't thank the people who have supported us all these years through thick and thin and I have been and my family has been a a financial supporter, and I certainly plan to continue to do that. And I hope that um, that those of you who have stuck with us or maybe are new to us will will do it because we can't do it without you. Again, Eileen Alfandari, after serving as KPFA co-director news department, uh, co-director of the news department, uh, is retiring at the end of this month after over 43 years because she began as a volunteer of delivering news to the KPFA audience. She will be retiring. However, as she said there, she will still be doing volunteer reporting. This is a special 74th KPFA birthday broadcast as we come to you on our birthday weekend. And today we thought it was a great opportunity uh, to have you be able to hear from the person that you've heard from for so many years on this radio station, Eileen Alfandari, but never in that way. Eileen Alfandari very much believed in her role as a journalist. And when she went on air, she always came to you as a journalist. And it was our opportunity to kind of get a little bit deeper into Eileen and, and Eileen Alfandari's life, into her philosophy, into her ideas, into who really she is and what has helped formed her, the story about her parents is, is a very, very deep one. And I'm very glad we got to be able to tell you that story. Again, I've always believed, I say always, for many years I've believed that Eileen Alfandari is the best broadcast journalist I know. And I know great ones, many of them, not least, of course, Amy Goodman, who I believe in her own right will go down in journalism history. There will be awards named after Amy Goodman, the way we have awards named after folks like I.F. Stone. And of course, no two people are the same, but to me, some of the things that differentiate, say, Amy Goodman and Eileen Alfandari, is Eileen's ambition wasn't towards necessarily creating this global program that could be found everywhere. And to Amy Goodman's credit, that was her, and she has achieved that. I mean, that is in itself greatness. But Eileen's ambition, and I should be careful here to say who somebody's ambition is because you're never in anyone's head. She'd be the first to remind me that if I was doing a news story. Uh, but my sense is her her ambition was actually in reporting the news and giving it to you uh, and to try to make KPFA as good as it could be. You know, I also say she had a family. She had a wonderful disabled son who she would care for all of uh, his life and a couple of other kids as well who were equally wonderful. Uh, she created and ran a disability rights organization. Uh, and so she was equally ambitious and driven as, say, somebody like an Amy Goodman, but in a very different way. And KPFA is the better for it. I am the better for it. Many people who worked with her are the better for it. I mentioned 
uh, that those of us who work closely with Eileen Alfandari have what I like to call Eileen Alfandari's voice uh, in our head. And it's true. When you when you work with Eileen long enough, she is always she's always the most logical and rational person and an unemotional person. Uh, I know and I actually mean that in a good way, not in a bad way. Um, and she's always just getting right to the point and asking because she joined us in our editorial meetings and and asking us questions and trying to drive us to, to do what was really right to serve the audience. Uh, so much so she didn't, after a matter of time, even have to be at the meeting anymore or even talk to us because we already knew where she would go with it. And we had her voice in our head. And I know I'm not the only one who feels this way. Um, and and it wasn't always easy. You know, you see, <laughs> sometimes I would see Eileen. I was thinking, OK, it's it's the weekend. I'm going to I'm going to get away. And I'd see Eileen Alfandari walking towards my little office in the back of the station uh, coming down the hallway. And I just I try to run. I try to get out of there. Because I know there's going to be more work coming. <laughs> oh, she has that look. But she even had to do that because I still have her voice in my head and I have to try to blot it out. Like, no, I need this time. I need this time. And I say that in a negative way, but actually it's a very good way. Um, and it just shows the kind of effect that and influence that she has had uh, on many of us. And so I was very happy to be able to do that interview with Eileen Alfadari to be able to hear her outside of her role as a journalist uh, and to get a sense of her as as some of us, uh, many of us, actually know her. Of course, I am coming to you here on KPFA's 74th birthday weekend. It's 2023, so we like to say it's the birthday weekend, and because uh, because that's what we do now, right? I mean, be be thankful if if you're skeptical of those birthday weeks, birthday months. We're we're not doing a week, we're not doing a month, we're we're just doing a weekend. Tomorrow will actually be uh, the 74th birthday. KPFA was born on April 15th, 1949, by conscientious war objectors. The idea for KPFA uh, came out of of an internment camp of conscientious objectors, uh, I believe in Utah, and, and came up with this idea. We need to have a, an alternative radio station that promotes ideas of, of peace and that promotes alternative ideas and gets away from the com commercialization of, of radio, which at the time was the king of, of mediums when it came uh, to, to media. Radio, radio is it. And they created KPFA. And KPFA is the first successful radio station to operate uh, with listener contributions. And that's what we like to do on the birthday is ask you to renew your support to KPFA in supporting this historic radio station and perhaps uh, giving a, a nod towards the years that Eileen Alfandari has put into the station, not just on air, but behind the scenes as well. Anybody who donates, and this is a great, great thank you gift, we're going to send you a link that you can watch this wonderful documentary film called KPFA on the air. And it is a history of KPFA and is one of the things that influenced me to want to be involved in this radio station. The history is fantastic. And this documentary goes through this vast history of KPFA in a very beautiful way. And what happens, no matter how much you can afford, whatever you can donate to this radio station today to say happy birthday to KPFA, what we're going to do is we're going to send you a link. And the link is through this organization called Canopy. And it is a free online streaming service that you sign up with with a library card. So you need a library card to be able to do this. And if you don't have a library card, well, you can get one. I recommend getting one. And with that, you would not only be able to get this KPFA on the air uh, documentary film, but actually all the things that the libraries offer uh, that you can stream online. Everyone will get uh, a, a link to this to be able to sign up and do this. So the phone number is one 800 Four three nine five seven three two one eight hundred four three nine five seven three two and online at kpfa.org. And of course, at kpfa.org, you can look and see all the thank you gifts that we're offering this fun drive. We're offering the Pacifica Radio. Uh, uh, the Rise of an Alternative Network. This is the book about the history of KPFA and Pacifica Radio by our good friend Matthew Lazar. That's yours for a contribution of $200. Also for $200, uh, 
Voices That Change the World. This is, comes on a jump drive, a USB drive that you plug into your computer, has just hundreds and hundreds of the greatest uh, audio pieces that we have in the history of KPFA. That's yours for a contribution of $200. And for a contribution of $120, you can get a book of poetry from my colleague, Dennis Bernstein. It's called 19 Poems by Dennis Bernstein. That is available for $120. And of course, I always ask for a contribution that you can afford, one that's according to your mean, means, and one that you feel good about knowing that you did your part in supporting this historic radio station on its 74th birthday. Help us get to our 75th birthday. As you know, it's not guaranteed. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes you you want to get there. We're now just a year from there. Uh, it would be it would be an important moment to to actually get there to get to that seventy fifth birthday because it will show the power of independent media. It will show the power of community radio, of public radio, and it will also highlight uh, the history here of our own San Francisco Bay Area. The K KPFA I've always said is part of the cultural fabric uh, of this radio station, um, of, of not just this radio station, but of of, of Bay Area life. Uh, it's been here since 1949. Uh, I very much believe that this Bay Area region we live in, that we love and we, we cherish, uh, I'm not sure there's any other place in this world where a radio station, KPFA, uh, could begin. Uh, but at the same time, I'm not entirely sure that this Bay Area would be something that we cherish, something that we fight for, something that we concern about as we see how inequality works here. Uh, but nonetheless, this place we still all love and cherish, I don't think it's the Bay Area is what the Bay Area is without this subtle influence of KPFA over the last 74 years. Of course it wouldn't be. How could it not? It's part of our character. So I'm asking you to support this radio station today. It is our 74th birthday. We are asking for a contribution, again, that you can afford, that you feel good about, uh, and help us get to that 75th uh, uh, birthday next year. The phone number, again, is 1-800-439-5732. 1-800-439-5732 and online at kpfa.org. Remember, kpfa.org. Check out all the thank you gifts that we're offering in this in this fun drive. Um, really good stuff, including uh, KPFA uh, hoodies. I do see folks wearing these hoodies out there. Bumper stickers, um, tote bags, water bottles, <laughs> <laughs> we got our own merch. Uh, and if you want something like that, we'd be happy to send it to you. But of course, what we really need is 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 your support uh, because it is where the rubber hits the road when it comes to public broadcasting. Uh, it is what has allowed KPFA these past 74 years to be commercial free. That's important. That's actually an achievement. There's not many places uh, that that has been able to pull something like that off. Keep in mind, KPFA is the first radio station to successfully operate by 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 listener donations. It's what gives this radio station the freedom to bring the things that it brings on. It's what allows us to do programming without thinking about what's going to drive up the highest ratings, because usually uh, that results in the lowest uh, common denominator, uh, and it dumbs things down. Well, we've We've, we've never tried to do that for this radio station. Of course, some days are, are better than others. Some days we pull it off. Some days we come a little bit short. That That's just that's just life, <laughs> right? But that's the goal, and that's what we try to do. And we've been able to do that because of the people who supported this radio station back in 1949. If you heard in the previous hour with my, my colleague and friend, Brian Edwards Teekert, um, in the interview with Matthew Lazar, uh, it was an, a very novel idea to come to folks and say, hey, you can get this for free. You can get this, you know, it doesn't matter. You, it, this is available to everyone regardless of their ability to make a contribution. However, there, the, part of this deal is that there needs to be a civic obligation out in the community uh, of supporting the things that they think are important to support uh, in their community, in their region. And, and so people donated uh, to KPFA, the, the people ensured that this radio station has been here from 1949, and KPFA even went off the air, right? Because at first it was so novel, it's like, well, why am I going to donate to to this uh, if I can get it for free, right? In some ways, it's it's counterintuitive, but the idea was that there would be enough folks out there who would, who you know, yeah, I, I I want to live as Henry David Thoreau would say, deliberately. It's important to live deliberately because. When you support the things that you believe in, it shows that you are 
that 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 you are walking the walk, right? That that you are doing your part. Not only are these just ideas that are important to me, but I'm trying to put these ideas in in action, and I'm going to support this because if not, this won't be available for anybody, right? It won't be available for anybody, and people have done it, and it's been a beautiful thing. It's actually a really beautiful thing. It's part of our history, and we're asking you to, uh, to we're asking you to to support it again today. Help us get to that 75th birthday. The phone number again is 1-800-439-5732, 1-800-439-5732, and online at kpfa.org. And as Eileen Alpendary said in that interview, she financially donates to KPFA. Most people who work at KPFA also give financially to the radio station as well because it's a labor of love. Uh, nobody here is, 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 is getting rich at KPFA. Believe that. Believe me on, on that. And part of it is because of our commitment to this model of, of keeping this place commercial free. Everything else is just dominated by commercials. If you go throughout the radio dial, it, it's a wasteland kind of. It, it really is. And hardly anything, nothing is untouched uh, by, by, by the commercialization of, of media and, and of the radio airwaves. This is actually one of the few places – that you can confidently say, I, I might not be happy with what I heard yesterday. I might not like this show. I do like that show. Uh, wh whatever it may be, the one thing you can say is that whatever happens at this station is not driven by uh, commercials, not driven by a corporate bottom line. And that's something we should all be proud about. That's right here. That's our culture. That's our Bay Area culture. And that's why we're asking you to support this radio station. 1-800-439-5732. 1-800-439-5732. 5732 and online at kpfa.org. You know, it's funny. I I, in, in, I, I say about Eileen Alfandari, she really is one of the smartest and most rational people I know. Uh, getting, I, I like to tell people, getting into an argument with Eileen Alfandari is like getting into an argument with Dr. Spock. From Star Trek, you're going to lose because a she will be she will not bring emotion to it. She will not raise her voice. She will not yell. She will be she'll stick on point. She will be rational. She'll even hear your argument and I very much have a response. And there was a time that my office used to be right next to Andrew Phillips' office, who was our former KPFA general manager, and. Andrew Phillips was brought in at the time to really kind of combat the paid staff. This was a, during a contentious time at the radio station, and we've had them. And it was a terrible time, actually. You had folks on different sides, people who were friends, who were suddenly against each other. It, it was a really terrible moment, and this is about 2010 or so. And then afterwards, uh, Pacifica brings in Andrew Phillips, and you know he'll tell you his, his main task was to come in and sort of you know tamp down on, on, on the paid staff. And, and then he got here, and, and he did that for He called us the fifth column. It was great. <laughs> it was great. And he got here, and, and, and that's how it started off. And, you know, Eileen would go into his office every day and just basically talk to him, you know, talk to him and reason with him. And I would go in there, and I'd see him afterwards, and he just looked like a man who got who, – who was exhausted – we got, yeah, man, are you okay? I go, it's almost like a good cop, bad cop kind of thing. You know, are you, are you okay, man? Oh, that must have been tough. I know that wasn't easy. And it came around, and to his credit, Andrew Phillips did a great deal towards uniting the radio station. I think saved the radio station uh, at the time. It was, it was a general manager that, you know, multiple sides of our factions actually ended up really appreciating and he saved the radio station. But I just remember, I was like, if Eileen, because I've, I've tried to resist Eileen Alfandari, and it, it, it didn't go well. <laughs> it just doesn't go well. Because she was smart, and, she, and usually she was right. And if she wasn't right, she'd say so. She's somebody I admire deeply, deeply. I consider her my, my radio mother, uh, really. Um, that's why I say it was bittersweet that she's retired. I, I am actually very happy for her, of course, in her, in her next stage and the things she's going to do because, you know, if you know Eileen, she's like the healthiest person in the room too. Um, but, uh, but, uh, but, but working with her, uh, was one of those things that, um, 
meant the deal. Well, it meant the world to me. It meant the world to me. And so a little bit bittersweet, but we are very happy for her nonetheless. Anyways, I hope folks will also show their support for the dedication that Eileen Alfandari has put into this radio station over more than four decades by just chipping in. Join Eileen Alfandari because Eileen Alfandari will be chipping in as well. 1-800-439-5732. 1-800-439-5732. And online at KPFA. Dot O-R-G. Again, anybody who contributes this hour, we're going to send you a link to the streaming service called Canopy. And again, it is connected to, to, to libraries around the country. Um, and through Canopy, you put in your library card, you'll need a library card. Uh, not only will you be able to get KPFA on the air, which is this most wonderful documentary uh, narrated by the great uh, Alice Walker, um, and only, you, you, not only will you get access to that documentary about the history of KPFA, but you'll get the entire catalog that the, the libraries have. So give us a call, 1-800-439-5732, 1-800-439-5732, and online at kpfa.org. We have other thank you gifts as well. In fact, if you want the KPFA on the air documentary in a DVD for Matt, that – it's for a contribution of $100. Of course, you just you can get it for $35, $50 if you just do it online with this Canopy service. But if you want the DVD version, just it's $100. If you want the book by our good friend Matthew Lazar and Pacific His, Pacifica Historian called Pacifica Radio, The Rise of an Alternative Network, great book as well. That's yours for a contribution of $200. The Pacifica Radio Archives, Voices That Changed the World. I mean, we're talking like hundreds of hours of audio. Uh, from the greatest moments of, of Pacifica Radio's past. That's for a contribution of $200. And then Dennis Bernstein of Flashpoints, his his Notebook 19, his book, Notebook 19, Poems by Dennis Bernstein. That's yours for a pledge of $120. The phone number again is 1-800-439-5732, one 439 5732 and online at kpfa.org. Down to my last 45 minutes. Certainly thankful to the folks who have supported this radio station because that's another huge part of what makes this radio station happen. There are those who volunteer their time and their labor. That's the vast majority of the people at this radio station. And, and, and that is a huge part of our identity of who we are. And then there are the folks who donate money as well. It's a community affair. Uh, we need both in order to keep this historic radio station on the air and get us to our 75th birthday. The number is 1-800-439-5732, 1-800-439-5732, and online at kpfa.org. And I do thank you very much. You're four years younger than I am, you young punks. This is Ben Fontoris. Please join me by sending wishes and donations of support to America's first listener-sponsored radio station. Here's to a continued long broadcasting life. Happy birthday, 94.1 FM. You're listening to 94.1 KPFA, 
89.3 KPFB in Berkeley. KFCF 88.1 FM in Fresno. 97.5 K248BR in Santa Cruz. And online worldwide. Worldwide. Worldwide at kpfa.org. Thank you.